little nervous, so bear with me. But uh, yeah, this topic isn't the most fun to talk about, but it's what I know a lot about. So um, yeah, sorry about the iPhones. But anyway, game on. We are addicted to oil, and we have this problem. And essentially, everything in this room, everything we ate today, all of our clothes, how we got here, use oil. We're entirely dependent on it. So what is peak oil? Peak oil refers to that moment in time when the world will achieve its maximum possible rate of oil extraction. From then on, the amount of oil available to society on a daily basis will begin to dwindle. It's basic rules we learned in first grade. Natural resources are finite. They won't go on forever. They follow a simple bell curve, as you can see on this next slide coming up. Production increases when we find the resource, then it plateaus and will begin to, de to decrease. So this curve says the peaking will occur between 2000 and 2020. The point is, there's projections all over the place, and that doesn't matter when it actually occurs. But when it occurs, demand will keep rising, supply will keep waning, and prices will be off the wall. It doesn't matter the exact date of peaking, but it's going to happen, and we're kind of screwed. So anyway, to dispel a myth, peak oil does not mean we're running out of oil. We're never going to extract all the oil from this world. It's simply impossible. It is not when we use the last drop that matters, but it's actually when we peak, oil will become increasingly more expensive. So here's this guy, Robert Hirsch. He was hired by the US Department of Energy in 2005, and he produced this seminal document called the Hirsch Report. After, he was interviewed and is quoted saying, there's no question in my mind, at least, that peaking is likely to occur in maybe the next 10 or 15 years. We're in a very serious, serious problem. Much worse than the worst we could think of. This problem is truly frightening. This problem is like nothing that I've ever seen in my lifetime. And the more you think about it and the more you look at the numbers, the more uneasy any observer gets. It's so easy to sound alarmist, but there simply is no question that the risks here are beyond anything that any of us have ever dealt with. The risks to our economies and our civilization are enormous. People don't want to hear that. I don't want to think about that. That's a very uncomfortable thing to think about. This is an incredibly difficult, difficult and incredibly severe problem. That's not very comforting words from one of the most prominent peak oil and government legitimate activists that we have out there. But anyway, it's okay because um, we can just drill, baby, <coughs> drill, right? But first we have to understand the difference between conventional oil and unconventional oil. Conventional oil is simple crude oil. It's as if we were to walk into a bar, ask for a beer, and the bartender will pour a beer directly from the tap. But unconventional oil is if you were to go to a bar and they were out of beer. And so you proceed to burn the carpet and calculate that there must be a number of drops from the 10 years of the bar's existence to burn one cup of beer from the carpet. It's completely ludicrous. And it is the desperate, futile action of an addict unable to imagine life without the object of his addiction. The truth is this graph. Peak oil is a tiny little bump in the graph of our world fossil fuel consumption over millennia. So anyway, I mean, it's not going to be cheap for much longer. So maybe we should just like fly everywhere we can or buy a round the world plane ticket or hide in our pockets or buy golden guns. No, but really, what do we do? We have to start looking at the most fundamental necessity as humans, and that's the food we eat. Right now, we're able to buy and eat food 24 hours a day and have it be really cheap at all times. And this is due to something called industrialized agriculture. Industrialized agriculture is dependent on massive amounts of cheap petroleum to refrigerate, to transport, to package, to make pesticides and fertilizers. The average piece of food travels 1,500 miles before it reaches our dinner plate. What's going to happen when we run out of cheap oil? So here's Matthew Simmons. He was the energy advisor under George W. And he says that if there were to be an oil scarcity panic and everyone were to go simply fill up their car tanks with gasoline, we'd be out of food on the supermarket shelves in five to seven days. That's a pretty scary thought. So the point is that we're incredibly food insecure. Our industrialized food will increasingly cost more money as the price of oil rises, and we have to start taking ownership and personal responsibility of where we buy and consume and food. And so this is really depressing, and I don't have to get time to get into all the solutions, but there's so many opportunities in the Boulder community to get involved, to learn how to garden, to learn how to can tomatoes, 
to garden wherever you can and preserve food, meet friends, become happy. Because the point is, we need to wean the American food system off its heavy 20th century diet of fossil fuels and put it back on a diet of contemporary sunshine. And it's super easy. Thank you.